I'm Barbara from Divine Creative Love. And in this video, we're going to be journaling on Revelation chapters 21 and 22, which paint a beautiful picture of the eternal life that God has in store for us. In verse 1, it says, Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. So I've done some sketches here. I'm using both stamps and some of my own hand lettering to capture some of the main points of these chapters. And then on the left of the page, or sorry, on the right of the page, you can see there I made a full size sketch that combines the different stamps that I'm using with the hand lettering to see how it all looks together. And I'm pulling stamps from several different stamp sets. You can see I've got a castle, there's some stars and some different words. And they're all going to be incorporated in, kind of in between the hand lettering. So I filled in the words that I didn't have stamps for with the lettering. So we're speeding things up here. So the first thing that I'm going to do is just put down a background with these uh, iridescent gelatos. And I should mention I'm using the illustrating Bible, so I didn't add any gesso. Uh, just putting the gelatos right onto the page. And I'm doing my favorite thing to do with gelatos, which is just to turn them into watercolors. I just use a paint palette and spray some water onto it and mix them and so they're like in a sheer watercolor on the page. I know that color is kind of hard to see. It's a uh, called Lunar from the Iridescent Gelatos set, and it's kind of a like a pinky pearlescent white. It's much easier to see in person. You can kind of see it when the light hits it just right. So I'm just covering the whole entire page with that uh, shimmery white color. So if you never read the book of Revelation, I highly recommend doing uh, some kind of guided Bible study. There's a really great study that's um, from the Through the Word app, and it's also available on the YouVersion Bible app. If you search for Revelation Explained, they have a whole series of these audio uh, devotional studies that walk you through the book of Revelation one chapter at a time. So like I said, if you've never read Revelation before, I highly recommend doing a study like that. But once you get to the chapters 21 and 22, which are the last two chapters in the book, they're a little bit easier to understand than some of the previous chapters. They don't have quite so much uh, symbolism and complex uh, prophecies. So the last two chapters are my favorites. And, you know, also because they just talk about this beautiful picture of the eternal life that God has in store for us. So here I'm just adding a little bit more of that white color to the page on top of the first layer. And you can see that it does make the page wrinkle a little bit. Any kind of paint like that you put on the illustrating Bible, the page will still wrinkle, but it won't bleed through, even without gesso. So you can see it has a little pink shimmer, mostly white, but like I said, it's easier to see it in person. It's hard to see it on the video. So once I've got that background, uh, what I'm doing is just tracing my sketch in the margin. And if you're combining uh, hand lettering with the uh, different stamps like this, what's really helpful is to trace the stamps into your sketch. So then you can see how the stamps are going to look alongside your own, your own lettering or your own sketches. 
So I'm just tracing my own hand lettering and I'm leaving a blank spot where those stamps are going to go. So and at the top there's a stamp that says inheritance and then there's some stars and I don't have a really sweet heaven and earth stamps. And then I'm using a stamp for God's name. And then down at the bottom there's a castle. And using the light pad for this step really helps to see the sketch that much easier. And you can see here sometimes I was correcting my centering and shifting the sketch a little bit. You can see I left empty spaces where all the stamps are going to go. And my original plan was to use these metallic watercolors for the hand lettering parts. And I had my eye on that gold and then I had the gold uh, stamp ink pad that I was planning to use for the stamps. But as is often the case, my original plan didn't quite look the way that I thought it would. So those two golds, they didn't quite match. But I still attempted to try it to see how it looked on the page. You can see that gold was not showing up very well, and after the first two letters I was thinking, eh, no, I think I need to switch, try a different path. I always say it's okay to switch course in the middle of the Bible journaling if your original plan's not working out as you expected it to, so I just decided, oh, I'm going to go with the trusty gel pens, the glitter gel pens, they'll show up so much better than that gold was. So then I'm just filling in the hand lettering with the gel pens and I'm adding a little bit more thickness on the down strokes. And then I'm going to grab this inheritance stamp. And I'm using a uh, Delicata Golden Glitz stamp pad to stamp with, which is a gorgeous, gorgeous shimmery gold ink. And I always clean the stamps with a little bit of distilled water and a damp paper towel. And one of the things that I like about that Delicata ink, besides the fact that it's so beautiful and shimmery, is it actually cleans really easily. It doesn't stain the stamp at all. So here I'm just adding a few of those little stars below the word inheritance.
So I decided to wait to fill in the inheritance until the gold ink would dry a little bit. So I moved on to the rest of the hand lettered words. And at that point I decided it's dry enough. So I've just filled in the that particular stamp had some open parts of the letters, so I filled them in with purple. One thing that I love about using those gooder gel pens is that they're very good at covering things up. So you can write on top of other colors with them and they're pretty opaque. So they can cover up that purple covers up the gold pretty well. And then I saved spots for those heaven and earth stamps. So those are going right below. And I decided to use the silver shimmer delicata ink for those. And then I'm going to come back in here in a minute and co color over them with the, some different gel pen colors. Anytime you're using a stamp where you know you want to come back in and color it, say like color it in multiple different colors, you can always uh, choose like a lighter colored stamp, like a silver, a gray, or maybe like a pale, I don't know, a pale blue or a pale pink color. Something that's easy to cover up and then you can come back in with something that's opaque like the gel pens and use it to make the stamped image multiple colors. So in the same thing here, I was waiting for the silver ink to dry a little bit before I colored on top of it. So just continuing with the hand lettering. And if you've never done hand lettering before, I'll link uh, below to a post that I wrote about how you can learn some hand lettering for using it in Bible journaling or anything else that you would want to use hand lettering in a card making or just, just regular journaling. It's a very fun, fun and handy skill to have. sure that that was really good and dry so I wouldn't smudge it going back over to color in the heaven and earth and I went with the purple for the for the words just to be consistent so all the words are in purple since the Lettering styles do vary a little bit between the stamps and my own lettering. I wanted to make sure it's more consistent just to have that one color for everything. So here I'm picking out colors for the cloud and the earth. So I've got a dark blue and a more like lighter cloud blue.
and then picking out a green for the green part of the earth. And you can see that kind of makes them pop a lot more than just having them be one solid color. And you can see next to the width I left the space for that, um, for God's name, and I'm using that stamp for that, and same thing in putting it in gold, and then I'll fill in with purple after it dries. went ahead and used my heat tool on that stamped just to make sure that it dries quicker so I wouldn't have to wait this time. I try to always do the gel pens from the top of the page down just because gel pens take probably even longer than the stamped ink to dry and there's always that risk of uh, accidentally smudging the gel pen ink if you're writing on top of or, or above some of the ink that you've already put down. It never fails. It seems like every time I use gel pens there's always something that gets smudged. It's just because it takes them so long to dry. And that's also why I'm using the little uh, index card under the heel of my hand just to make sure that my hand doesn't drag in some of the gel pen ink and smudge it. And again, like I said earlier, I'm just adding a downstroke, a thicker downstroke on all of these letters. In my sketches, I just had them just a basic sketch. And I'm just making them a little bit thicker here. Now that all the lettering is complete, then there's this castle stamp is the last stamp that'll go down at the bottom. When I was planning out this page, I thought, what can I do to capture some of that majesty of God's new creation? I mean, it's impossible to do that in reality but you know how can i how can i possibly come close to capturing you know a tiny glimpse of the you know wonderful descriptions in in these revelation chapters that describe you know streets of gold and gemstones and just this is, it makes it sound you know so gorgeous So a castle is kind of the closest thing that I can think of. And you'll notice there that castle didn't quite get uh, stamped as well on the bottom part of the stamp. So I'm coming back in with the uh, pigment micron pen and going over some of the lines. And I used um, archival ink to stamp with, 
just because I'm going to come back in with gelatos and paint over it to make it different colors and uh, that archival ink is really great to use for painting like that because it's waterproof and it won't budge when you know when you paint over it with watercolors or gelatos or anything like that and the same thing for the pigment micron pen it's also pigment ink so it's uh, very smudge proof and waterproof We'll just dry it off a little bit with the heat tool and then I had this really pretty washi tape with the gemstones and some stars and bright colors on it and that was kind of another thing that I thought would kind of bring out the those descriptions like say in for example in Chapter 21, verse 18, it says the building material of its, of, of its wall was jasper, and the city was pure gold, clear as glass. The foundations of the city were adorned with every kind of jewel. The first foundation is jasper, the second sapphire, the third chalcedony, the fourth emerald, the fifth sardonyx, the sixth carnelian, the seventh chrysolite, the eighth beryl and the ninth topaz the tenth chrysoprase the eleventh jacinth the twelfth amethyst the twelve gates are twelve pearls each individual gate was made of a single pearl the main street of the city was pure gold transparent as glass i mean how do you even imagine what that would be like what that will be like so I kind of thought that washi tape was appropriate. So here I'm just using some of the gelatas to color the castle different different shades of purple and pink. You might notice as I started to color the pink in here, it was kind of looking a little bit like a little girl castle to me. So like a little too much pink maybe. So I did go in a little bit later in the video, you'll see I went in with some gold on top of that pink to make it look a little less girly and a little more majestic. So here I'm bringing in some of these Fanatec metallic watercolors to color the, the door and the little torches next to the door as a gold and copper color.
uh, like I said earlier, the uh, overly pinkness of the castle was bugging me a little bit. Uh, it was a little too girly, so this is where I decided to go back in with some gold color and go over the pink color to make it look a little more majestic. So I was mixing two different gelatos to get kind of a golden color and I just went over the light pink parts of the castle. And that I think looks much better. So for the last step here, I'm going to highlight some key verses and I'm just going to use the gelatos again in different colors for some of the different verses, starting with the purple. Just adding some more water to make it sheer enough that it will let the text show through. And then I'm highlighting this verses 1 and 2 of chapter 21. Then I saw a new heaven and new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. I also saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming out down out of heaven from God, prepared like a bride adorned for her husband. And then I continued highlighting the verses 3 and 4. Then I heard a loud voice from the throne. Look, God's dwelling is with humanity, and he will live with them. They will be his peoples, and God himself will be with them and will be their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Grief, crying, and pain will be no more. Because the previous things have passed away. Wow. Wow. So there are a few uh, key verses that I wanted to highlight in gold that are actually words that God spoke himself. So I just, for that I decided to go with the metallic watercolors and I just watered them down enough that they wouldn't cover up the text. So this verse just says, look, I am making everything new. And then there's this key verse, the one who conquers will inherit these things and I will be his God and he will be my son. And then here I'm highlighting verse 12 through 14 of chapter 22. Look, I am coming soon and my reward is with me to repay each person according to his work. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Blessed are those who wash their robes so that they may have the right to the tree of life and may enter the city by their gates.
And then here again, we have that wonderful description of what the uh, city was made of. Jasper, pure gold, as clear as glass. Sapphire, chalcedony, emerald. So many precious gems. And then this verse, her radiance was like a precious jewel, like a jasper stone, clear as crystal. How do you even imagine that? So there's the finished page. I think in some ways it didn't turn out as glorious as I had imagined it in my mind, but that's just a reminder that you know, what the new heaven and new earth that God will actually create is just beyond our ability to comprehend. We can't possibly capture it. Thank you for watching. Be sure and subscribe to my channel so you won't miss any of my future Bible journaling videos. Bye!